This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Steampunk Rally Fusion. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, thank you very much. You may have remembered I did a video for the original uh, Steampunk Rally. Uh, it was one of my favorite games of that year, and I still own it, and I'm still a proud member of my gaming shelf. Um, when the opportunity arose that I was able to take a look at the new, like, standalone sequel, expansion, whatever you want to call it, um, I jumped to the chance, and because that was uh, I just, it was one of those games that like, maybe it was like the first game that I ever had that was like a racing game that I really liked. Maybe it was the first game um, that had uh, like, like some dice rolling slash placement slash manipulation engine building type game. Um, it just, it just really struck me as being really, really cool, uh, really, really innovative. And, and, you know, and that was kind of towards the beginning of when I was really getting into this board game world uh, that I'm part of now. Um, so uh, this standalone sequel I it was gonna be more of the same with some new wrinkles and I was excited to try it out I was really really pleased with it um, so let me show you how the game is played just a quick little overview of how the the card drafting the dice manipulation works and how exactly you put your like your crazy contraption together and then like the do the engine building if you will and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts all right awesome all right, so this is Steampunk Rally Fusion, and I have gone ahead and just set up a four-player game just so I can kind of show you how the game works. I'm not going to play the entire game or anything. I just want you to have an idea of how the mechanisms roll. Um, I have set this up without the, like, um, beginner game or, like, uh, if you're teaching to new players or if you want to, like, have a, a shorter game, um, they offer this as the new start uh, spot instead of a standard start spot there. Um, the big thing for this is that it has more spaces and, like, this is, like, an on-ramp. Um, so, as I said, this is an engine building game, so this will give players a little bit of time to, you know, get kind of cranked up and get ready to uh, move, you know, as far as before having to actually deal with any of the rigmarole that's going to be out on the board. And plus, um, when you do this, like, uh, you don't have boost cards, so boost cards um, are a card that the players can use to kind of help themselves or hinder others or what have you, so um, you don't have that, so you can't have any of, like, the screw job mechanisms going on right then. Um, you don't have a vent phase. So um, the vent phase is a phase that you use to um, get rid of dice that are locked into spots on your contraptions. Uh, so you don't have those, and um, you, everybody takes their turn on no, not simultaneous. Now that you, you don't have to take simultaneous turns when you play the game anyway, but the game will move quicker if everybody just does um, like their race phase at the same time, uh, just because you don't have to wait for everyone. But I have found that like watching other people go through the uh, their processes of their engine is is, is enjoyable so if that's the way you play the game that's the way you play the game um you are going to get a uh a, a, like a person and 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 their machine like i i chose alan turing uh i i've always enjoyed code breaking i enjoyed uh, the book cryptonomicon where he was in that book as like a historical fiction type of situation um but you have tons of these to to choose from. Um, you know, like even like I think Amelia Earhart is in here. Um, the like different uh, cool people that um, you know from the past that uh, you'd be able to use as well. And in each person will have like a, a different um, like starting uh, or thing like so here's like Amelia Earhart as I said so like hers um, is, is is you know very much different um, from uh, Alan Turing's you know starting a contraption or whatever so uh, you'll have a cockpit which you can never uh, lose it can get destroyed but you'll just get it back um, if you do get your cockpit and your entire contraption destroyed it doesn't you're not knocked out of the game uh, but it does put you immediately into last place and this is a race game so that's not a good thing you don't want your contraption to be completely destroyed um but uh you you can lose the starting piece that you have also as you build up your contraption you are allowed to move your pieces around as you see fit at any time you're a quirky inventor you just have that ability you can also discard parts very easily and just ditch them and put a new part on if you like so just keep that in mind as you play um 
There is uh, uh, one thing that, that at the beginning of the game you'll get these these two secret project cards. You're going to pick one of those two to use. Whichever one you pick, you place that front, down in front of you like so, and you place your marker on there to show that um, you are going to be working on your secret project. And as you escalate up on the track the secret project, there is a silver phase, there is a gold phase, and there is the maxed out. And these are like a one-shot item, but when you turn them in, as you can see, like there's a 4, an 8, or a 12, yeah, you'll get bonuses. Like, like in this case, like like the lowest bonus is you get a blue die and you get to move two spaces uh, on, on on the track. If you do. But if you get it all the way to the top and you use it, it looks like you get to move six spaces. Uh, you get six movement points, I should say, because sometimes spaces will be different to move through and stuff. But and also two blue dice if you manage to uh, get it all the way up to the top. Um, as I said, it is a one shot item. You keep that secret for everybody, and then you can just turn it in uh, when you want to. Uh, to play the game after you get everything set up. Oh, and one other thing, you do get this uh, like this brilliant idea token uh, on your turn during the race phase. You can oh, that's cool. Uh, let's see if I can do it again. There yeah, I did. All right. Anyway, so uh, you you during the race phase, um, you will get to. Uh, uh, flip that over and then any part on your machine that has this little uh, icon up on the top as soon as that comes into focus It's a light bulb icon um, Like Alan Turing is going to start actually this one too. I should show them both to you um, Both of his uh, start with the light bulb icon up there But you can get parts later added to it that have light bulb and then basically uh, you will turn those on You don't have to activate those with dice when you do that uh, to begin the game You're going to draw one of each of these decks of cards. It's going to be a copper part a silver part, a gold part, and a boost. Uh, remember that if you are playing with this, you don't draw the boost to begin with. You won't draw boost cards until uh, you get past uh, the, the on-ramp. Um, uh, boost cards are, are look like this. They don't have any contraption or anything. Um, if you choose to keep this card, uh, you can have as many boost cards as you want, and you can turn those in for their special powers, um, usually at any time, unless the card tells you that it is a specific phase. Like, sometimes it'll be, like, just during the vent phase, and if you have to, so you have to use it then. But otherwise, you can have as many of these stockpiled as you like, and you can use them up however you like as well. Um, and, like, this one is uh, Aerofoil. Um, oh, and I should mention that Every card will have uh, up in the top right and will have these icons. And that means in this case, it's like a, a blue die with a hash, a red die with a hash, a yellow die with a hash, and these two cogs. Um, if you don't want to draft this card for like its ability, you can always turn these in for resources. And you're going to do that a lot, actually, because of the fact, um, in a lot of games, like when you turn cards in for resources, it's kind of like hate drafting. You're just destroying it. Some, somebody else can have it. But usually you have to do this to basically get some dice to start with. So you can um, you know, have dice to roll during uh, the, the race phase of the game, during where you're going to be moving your engine. So you're going to be using one or two of these cards usually every turn. Uh, for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes, like, the cards you get just won't even work with your machine. So it's just, uh, you know, it's like, if you don't have an option, you just use it and you, you, you destroy it and make it dice out of it. But anyway, so that one, and so, like, when you use it, in this case, it says... Um, uh, you get to uh, remove two red dice uh, from your from your contraption, and if you have uh, no exposed valves aimed upward, you gain movement per damage currently on your damage gauge. So this is something you could use if you took a bunch of damage and you want to move a bunch of spaces. You know, might as well. You know, even if the damage is going to like destroy uh, your your machine. And the damage gauge, I should might as well show this, is a little little circle. As you heal damage, you can move into the positives there, but as you take damage, you'll move into the negatives, and you will have to. Uh, manage that damage at the end of the the, the round and like so uh, and that will cause you if you have negative damage You'll have to lose pieces of your contraption and sometimes that'll be by design Sometimes you'll have a, a, a piece that maybe just has a bunch of dice on it that you can't get rid of and you just want to get rid of it Because it's just uh, dead weight anyway, but anyway, so um, you have uh, I have these cards I should, Where's where's my boost card? There you go. So I have these cards and I'm gonna pick one um and sometimes, like, there'll be a card like this. This is a pretty cool part. Um, like, so just to so understand this this card. Uh, so it has space for these four dice, two blue, uh, red, and a yellow. And if you have a six on there, a total of six pips, and that could be if you have two threes, you can have that. But, you know, six obviously will work. Um, you can turn it into two blue dice. Also, if you manage to put four cogs on here and power it up, every time you activate it, you're going to get a fuse die and also shield yourself from one damage. This is a pretty good part. However... 
you'll notice that it only has uh, a spot in the front, and I don't have a spot in the front here to put this on. I can't put it like this. You have to put the the words in the top left corner, like so. So uh, you know, that card doesn't work. However, like I have this card, it looks really super cool. Um, this uh, oscillation overdrive, it, and, you know, I don't have anything on my starting uh, contraption to actually move me forward, but this one does. Um, at pips of three or more, give me movement. Also, if you see this, like if I want to, I can just destroy this this part off of my ship. I can get a smooth movement. That's what this golden uh, golden uh, wheel is. A smooth movement basically uh, means that you don't. If it, if the spot has damage on it, you don't take the damage. So you can just move on to the spot. And then also I get a fusion die for for destroying the part. But regardless, that's a pretty good thing. We're just going to put it on the bottom like so. Well, actually, technically, um, you put the card face down in front of you like so until everybody else is picked, and then everybody turns their card over, and then they do what they do. They either attach it or you know if they wanted to they destroy it for the resources that's available and then you take these cards and and you hand them off um to the person in this case this card will tell you this event card tells me that I, i'm going clockwise with my drafting now you might be saying well how does the event card work um in this case uh for this map and i should mention that like there's a there's the two sided map tiles there's a mars map and a machu picchu map i'm playing the mars map in this case the mars map uh, you might not be able to see this really closely, but there's these tripods on the spot. Whenever a person enters into a tripod spot, they're going to draw an event card, and the event card is going to tell you something. In this case, it's harvesting uh, invest, um, inventor in uh, tripod squares, either flip down their brilliant token, or uh, for the next round, or lose one machine part and vent two dice of the type shown in the corner, if any. So, um, you know, these can be good, bad, otherwise, but as you can see, the next one shows a counterclockwise arrow. So now um, we would, and this is random, this deck is shuffled, so like the next one's still a counterclockwise arrow, but um, the next card, we would draft the opposite way the next round because of that. So, I mean, that's how those event cards work. But anyway, so um, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of um let's just add this card here to the top like so just so i can so like I, I put two cards onto my machine and maybe i got some dice let's go ahead and take like i i turned in uh, other dice for um the I turn on other cards to, to crunch them up and, and and get dice for it so there there i have my dice all right so race phase comes everybody's going to take their dice they're going to roll them i'm going to see what i get here three four five that's not bad at all uh you know because i'm this one activates on a three or better so i could use both of these to activate um those two it kind of stinks because that's a total of eight um, if I had a cog, I could increase, cogs are like basically they have a lot of different purposes. They can use it to like upgrade the parts that you have. Also, um, cogs can be used uh, to upgrade the, uh, the a pip on, on a die by one. Uh, they can also uh, be used to allow you to reroll a die completely. Uh, they can also uh, be used uh, to um, like for venting during the vent phase, which I'll talk about here in just a little bit. Um, so there's cogs have a lot of different powers and abilities that you were going to want to use. Um, so in this case, since I rolled my dice, one of the one of the things about this one, this as I said, activates on a three. This particular spot, you notice, has a star there, meaning that any of these, uh, any dice that I place there, um, will doesn't matter what it is, as long as it matches the color, I get to go ahead and use. Um, like the, the 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 power on this one. So like I, for this is kind of where you get those chains going on. If I were to place you know a, a yellow die onto that spot, like so, I would be able to then you know be able to get two more yellow dice. And so when you ever you gain dice as part of an action, you get to get take those immediately and roll them. Now this might not be the best idea for me. I just want to show you how this works. I got a two and a six. Actually, that does help me a little bit because of the fact that. I get to um, use a three and a six like so, and that's a nine total. And now I have this two and a five, which mm, not the best thing in the world because I'll show you once again, <laughs> sometimes you'll end up with dice that you just can't really do much with and that kind of stinks. But so now I've done that. I've got my two dice. I've re-rolled those. Now 
remember this is all simultaneous everybody's just doing this so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to place that six there and i'm going to place that three there and that's a total of nine multiples of three so i'm going to be able to move three spaces so i'm going to be able to take uh my guy where is he uh, there he is i'm going to go one two three now a couple of things first of all i'm at a fork now so next time i move i have to decide if i want to go this way or go that way this way has a lot of damage um you know going on this one has a spot where you have to have two movement to get into it so i'm gonna have to like make my mind as far as you know how which route i want to roll um there's a lot of other options too like sometimes there'll be like it's longer to go around certain other spaces sometimes you're chasing somebody because you maybe you have a boost card that'll allow you to damage them and you they go down a certain fork and you have to follow them to do so so lots of different options going on but right now i don't have to make up my mind because i'm in that spot next time i move i can but i entered into a spot that does one damage now i don't i i would have to right now i'm at zero so i would have to take one damage and so i'm sitting at one damage <laughs> what am i going to do well if we look at um alan turing one of the things is is that if i activate my my brilliant uh idea i get two cogs from that but also on this one i can either take two cogs or i can take a shield and i can shield that damage so i'm not going to take those two cogs I'm going to take the, I was at a negative one. I'm going to take that, put that back to zero. So now I'm not going to take any damage in the damage phase. And um, I have these two cogs left over for this. Now, here's where the cogs come in, come in weird, where I can put dice onto my, uh, my, my secret, secret project to raise up my level on that. Um, I have to have a run of dice though, like one, two, three, two, three, four. If I can just put one die on there, sure, I can move up one spot. But what I want right now is I want to be able to match up. I want to hit like a, a one or a three. And like I have, uh, I have two cogs. And so what I could do here is I can spend those two cogs and I can lower this five down to a three and I can place those on there like two, three, and I can go one, two like that. And I move that up. My turn's done. I, I've, I've moved everything that I have. I've, I, I've adjusted everything. We're good to go. And so now um, these dice stay locked into place and I go ahead and return those. I want to actually mention, so like if I had destroyed this and taken a fusion die, as I said, anytime you get a die, you get to roll it. And so you, get, you have a dice. If you don't use a die, you lose it. Once you once you take a die, di fusion dice are um, ubiquitous. They can go anywhere. Uh, they're wild. But once you take a fusion die and you place it onto a spot, it is locked in place. There's nothing you can do. There's no there's no special card. There's nothing you can do to remove that die from that spot. You basically fused that die into that location. Fusion, right? But basically, you have to get rid of the piece. You have to ditch the piece and, and put something else in there because you've used up the spot. Uh, so, I mean, just keep that in mind. Fusion dice are very powerful because they go four through nine. They're like basically a 1d6 plus three. So they can definitely give you a big giant boost and give you an, unlock a bunch of powers. But um, you have to keep that in mind that uh, you that's where you're at. Now, um, technically, like we didn't do event phase because of the first round. So later on, like the next when the next round comes around, if I ended up with some cogs, you can use cogs to vent dice. So um, one cog will reduce two pips. Those two pips can come off of um, one die or they can come off of two dice. So I could like take one die and I could remove, get this four down to a two. I could spend both of those and I could reduce that and remove it completely. Or like I could spend both of these, I could remove this three, I'd have one die left over and I could like remove this down to a three. The uh, venting is basically like you're removing the heat from the machine and you're unlocking those spots. Remember, you cannot do that with fusion dice though. You can't, you can't vent a, a fusion die. All right, so, uh, but that was like the vent phase happens before the race phase, so just keep that in mind. Now, damage phase happens. If anybody can't take care of their damage, any part of damage, they have to remove a piece of their of their machine, and then you're gonna go to the end of your round. End of your round, um, normally you would, you would turn this over. Um, as I said, you remove the dice off of your secret project, but these dice stay locked in place, and then you're gonna do the exact same thing again. You're gonna draw four cards, and you're gonna go through the process of drafting your next bit. Um, the game is going to continue until somebody hits the finish line. 
once somebody hits the finish line, you basically have one turn then to just jam your machines as fast as you possibly can and get as far on this little curlicue as you possibly can. And whoever ends up the furthest down the track will be the winner of the game. It's kind of fun the last round. I mean, everybody's just like, I don't care, especially since there's like no like damages here on this. You don't care, you don't care, you don't care. You're just gonna push, 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 push. And you're just gonna jam your machine as fast as you can down the, the stretch, maybe doing a bunch of damage to it in the meantime, because sometimes like certain like different parts, like if you use them, they will do damage to your machine just by them being uh, activated. So, but you'll just say, you know, to heck with it, I'm going for it. And like you, you maybe there's even spots on the on the trip that like if you're a little behind and you're going to take damage running over, you don't care. You're not waiting for that smooth movement or anything like that. You're just going to go for it and see. Hopefully, you can end up further down the track in that last round. It's a lot of fun. That last round, you everybody's machine is just parts are flying left and right. Remember, you can always rearrange your machine. Um, you, it isn't like a game like Galaxy Trucker where like if you use a lose like a linch piece like everything else falls off you can you the inventors are can on the fly adjust their machines any way they want and and make sure that it stays together hey anyway, game's a heck of a lot of fun i love the theme i love the historical aspect of it i love the art uh, i love the, the the two different uh types of track that i can go on um the varied use of cards um the fact that you have this like secret objective or so you don't really feel like you lose dice in, in the first steampunk rally you could end up with dice that you just couldn't use and it would be you feel uh, I couldn't do anything with that but usually you you can usually uh, slough you know uh, your your unusable dice into uh, your secret objectives so you feel like you're actually doing something with those so tons of fun uh, just just a fabulous fabulous fun racing game with a bunch of different mechanisms uh, that that you know work really really well together but um, let me talk about that and more uh, in my final thoughts all right, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, watch the gameplay portion, or maybe you just skipped ahead. That's cool, too. Um, what do I think of this game, and what is my opinion? Well, like I already said, I, I really like the original. Um, I knew that I was going to enjoy the second coming of this, if you will, and, and I really uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, there's there's It's more of the same. Uh, you can technically, I guess, combine the, the original uh, Steampunk Rally with this, so if you, are, if you do own the original, um, this is just going to expand on that. I just... There's a few things that I really like the addition of. I really like that fusion die. Um, one of the things about when I played the original was everybody was like uh, really, really careful. Like they didn't want their their machine to break apart, right? Um, and you know, it was it was maybe you got a better part that you replace it with or something. But but everybody just kind of at the end, it was like your contraption was crazy big, and 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 it just didn't seem like things were flying apart, if you will. Now with the fusion dice like locking into place, and you can't ever remove them. I really like that aspect because now it just more feels like you're just putting together this crazy weird jalopy um and just blasting uh, like across the mars landscape in it and um like parts like i said flying off left and right and because you're more than willing to let those things fly off left and right you're willing to take a little bit of damage because hey uh i've used up most of these spaces in this part anyway it's it's bogged down with all these dice ditch it let's let's get something new let's let's slot something else in and and just move forward i'm I'm willing to take a point or two of damage if it means I can get rid of these superfluous uh, uh, spots that are that are on my part. So I like that. I do really like the secret objective card. Like I've had a few games where people have like definitely like powered those suckers up and and enacted the use of them in a perfect situation. I've never really been able to pull it off just because I mean, maybe the planning ahead for it for me isn't that great. But I definitely have seen it been used. My daughter has used it really, really well in those games. And um, I just, I like that. I like that like all of a sudden you flip the secret objective card over and like, haha, you know, you, you got that something really cool going on. So that's something I really like as well. Um, you know, and just like, as I said, the historical fiction part of it, you know, like, hey, it's really cool to kind of think of, you know, uh, you know touring and, and I mean, Amelia Earhart, you know, battling it out and racing uh, their their crazy, you know, creation across the Mars landscape or in Machu Picchu. It's just it's 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 a crazy concept. It's got a crazy theme, but it, it's when you ground those people in reality. And like also, it's like my daughter was able to like, who is this person? I was like, well, get out your phone. Let's Google it up. Let's see who it is because I don't know who that is either. And so that was kind of a, a neat little aspect as well. So I do kind of like that. There's a little bit of a little bit of a learning going on. Like you're playing your game, but maybe you're you're, you're learning a few factoids, if you will, about about uh, some of the, uh, the, the the famous inventors in our past that maybe you don't know everything about. So. 
All of those things combined, uh, a game that I really, really liked. A game that has, it's like, it's racing, it's engine building, it's it's dice placement, it's dice manipulation, uh, it, you know, it card drafting, all those things uh, put together into, like, you would, wouldn't seem like the, all those mechanisms like jammed together in, in one box would really come across as being a really smooth, really understandable, really like low barrier of entry as far as like teaching people how to play. It wouldn't seem like that would be possible, but Dad gum, they 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 pulled it off. Roxley Games did it. So so there you go. That is Steampunk Rally Fusion. If you have any questions about it, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, uh, I am the Undead Viking, uh, telling you uh, be the best version of you that you possibly can be. I guarantee you uh, that the more love uh, you give to the universe, the more the universe is going to love you back. Until next time, uh, take care. <laughs>